What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, checking out the new PlayStation 4 Slim. So this is a cheaper and smaller version of the original PS4. So this retails for $299 for 500 gigs of storage. Now this is different than the PS4 Pro, which is arriving next month. That brings a lot of new features, including 4K. Now when it comes to the unboxing, the PS4 Slim is launching with this Uncharted 4 bundle. Now if you look around the box, you'll see reference to the PlayStation VR, which is launching soon, which this device does support like the other PS4s. So cracking into the box, opening up the lid, you'll see the PS4 box inside this branded box. So if we pull this out, you'll see this nice white box. Actually, I wish they all shipped like this. I think this is much nicer. So we can go ahead and pop the tab along the side and get into the side of the box, which reveals all of the accessories. So first up, we have our cables, which includes a power cable. Once again, the power supply is internal. We also get HDMI and a micro USB cable for charging and linking the game controller to the console. We also get a very basic headset with an inline remote control and microphone which connects to the game controller. Speaking of the game controller, the DualShock controller has been revised slightly from the previous generation and we're going to take a look at that uh, when we compare them side by side but you can see the one difference right away is the new see-through light bar at the top of the trackpad. So next up we want to get to the console which is deep in the box here. We just have to move the flaps out of the way and slide it out. Of course we do get some paperwork and the game itself and we're going to set that aside and get to the console. So the console itself is bookended on either side with these cardboard sleeves. And once we remove that, we can remove the envelope protecting the box. So the console design itself looks like a simpler, more rounded version of the previous generation. We still have this angled design, but the corners have been rounded off. And of course, we have that matte plastic finish. So gone is that glossy finish from the original launch day PS4. But you'll still find that glossy piano black finish along the inside edge of the console. Now, in terms of the ventilation, you'll find plenty of it, but it's fairly well hidden here. So you'll see it on the inside ledge of the design. So this is very similar to the previous generation. I actually really like the way they execute this. Another very clever design detail can be found on the bottom of the console. So if you look at the rubber feet, you'll see that the feet themselves actually look like the PS4 buttons. So comparing the design of the PS4 Slim to the original launch day version, you can see it's not quite as flashy. We lose those sharp edges and that glossy and matte plastic finish. So it doesn't look as premium as it did. But overall, it's a nicer design because it's 40% smaller, the corners are more rounded, and overall it just looks a little simpler and cleaner. And of course, if this is going to disappear into your entertainment cabinet where your TV is, maybe it's not such a big deal. We've also lost that strobing LED indicator on the top of the PS4. Now that's been relocated to LED indicators on the power button. So it's much more subtle, but it still communicates the same information in terms of what each color means. Also gone are the capacitive controls of the original PS4. Instead, they're physical buttons, which are easier to operate. Now we still have two USB ports on the front, but they're much wider apart on the new PS4 Slim. Now if you look at the inside channel on one side of the PS4, you'll actually find a mount for the vertical stand, which screws into the side. You can see it's actually been integrated into the PS4 button icons. And if we look at the left side edge, we'll find some of the co-branding like HDMI, DTS HD, Dolby True HD, and Blu-ray discs. So unfortunately, you won't find Ultra Blu-ray in this case. Also new here with this generation is an access panel for the hard disk drive. So you can pop this off and access the hard disk drive if you want to replace it or upgrade it yourself. Now in terms of the I.O., the only difference between this generation and the previous generation is the lack of optical audio output. So that is gone from this. So instead we have HDMI, an Ethernet port, and the proprietary port for the PlayStation I. Now in terms of the DualShock controller, this has been tweaked slightly with this generation. The biggest news here is that we have a light strip at the top of the trackpad. The other visual change here is that we lose the glossy finishes around the buttons and the buttons themselves are gray instead of the black, so they contrast more with the controller's color. Now, if you're not a fan of wireless input and the lag that comes with it, you can now form a hardline connection to the game console using the USB cable. This is a setting you have to adjust, but if you use this, you should see a little less latency. Also new for the PS4 Slim is 5 GHz Wi-Fi support, so that's finally available on this console. Now, unfortunately, if you're a fan of 4K like I am, this does not feature 4K in any way. So we don't get a 4K Blu-ray player and we don't have 4K video streaming or gaming. But we do have HDR10, which is coming to all PS4s with the latest software. But of course, you will need a TV that supports HDR10, which mostly are 4K TVs. Now, although the PS4 basically offers the same experience of the original PS4, it does come with a new 16 nanometer APU, which means it runs cooler and more efficiently than the previous model. So it draws less power, does doesn't have to spin up the fans as much so it's quieter and generally runs cooler. Now something that doesn't really change here is the gaming performance. It's still excellent but it's not going to be any different from the previous generation. You shouldn't see any noticeable gains here but you will see improvements in terms of heat management, 
power usage, and of course the noise level. But as always, really the noisiest part of any console is the Blu-ray drive, and it's still as noisy as it was before. So unlike the Xbox One S, which I think was a significant upgrade over the previous model, the PS4 Slim really isn't that. It doesn't add any new features, it just does so in a cheaper and more compact form factor. Now personally for me, I'm really bummed out that this does not have 4K or Ultra HD Blu-ray like the Xbox One S, which retails for the same price. But for most people, I think gaming is a bigger priority, and of course the PlayStation ecosystem is vast with a great title selection. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the PS4 Slim. I will be covering the PS4 Pro coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you again in the next video.